Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, 5.30. Uh, that's 12.30 in the US on the Tuesday, the 12th of October. And finally, uh, on VectorVS US, we've got a little bit of green on the front page. Uh, uh, if it stays like this until the close. Uh, so the short term trend of the US market has been up, what now, for three, four days. Uh, all the other measures of the trend are down, but certainly that green light showing that the price of the VectorVest composite is up day over day and week over week uh, would be a, a welcome sign uh, that the bottom uh, maybe is in. Uh, so VectorVest advocates caution when buying stocks at this time. Uh, the uh, buy-sell ratio is improving, 0.7, and the MTI is improving uh, up a tad from yesterday at 0.84. This 0.84, the MTI needs to go above one before the underlying trend, uh, in fact, uh, turns to up. So if we have uh, a look at my old friend, the S&P, uh, we've got a very mixed situation here on the S&P. Um, uh, yesterday afternoon, it, the market went up, uh, clipped the high of uh, Friday and then turned again and then charted a very emphatic outside uh, bar. Uh, and uh, the market is down uh, today as well. Uh, so uh, lots of uh, Fibonacci at work as I've mentioned to many of you before from that low to the high the 4300 support level that's held is a 78 percent retracement of that and if we get rid of that and do a fib from that high to that low we can see that uh, last thursday's high was in fact a 78 percent retracement of this uh, so uh, an awful lot of geometry at work this pullback in three waves, as I've suggested on many occasions, needs a close uh, above this high to prove emphatically that the pullback is over. However, I, I would, I think that a pull, a close above last Thursday's high would be very solid evidence that the pullback is over, uh, and uh, that's what I'm going to try and wait for. Uh, market is selling off. If we have a look at the 24 hour market, uh, that's the 24 hour market. And uh, uh, that's the sell off yesterday. It went up right at the open and then slumped into the second half of the session. As you would expect, these lows are fib. And uh, if I try and find a fib here, very difficult on the tails to work out uh, where the Fib is going to go to because um, many of the uh, analysts will in fact look at that tail and try and investigate what volume was done in that tail. But uh, substantially the market found support here at that 62% retracement. Those of you that are familiar uh, with uh, harmonic patterns will know that that three-wave pullback uh, first put on the map by a gentleman called Harold McKinley Gartley uh, about a hundred years ago in his book, How to Make Money in Stocks. So uh, that's quite a positive pattern. And uh, uh, I was looking uh, today for a push up. And uh, at the minute, uh, we're, we're actually challenging this level again. I think that uh, as long as 4,340 and these lows hold today, then I'll keep my long position. I actually went long in the pre-market at 4,355 uh, and uh, uh, my uh, stop loss is underneath that low at uh, 4327, 4328. So based on the Gartley pattern, and we'll see whether it works or not. Uh, it was looking very good for a while, and then I took my eye off the ball, and it's now pretty much where I got in. Uh, so the, the trade is still running. And uh, uh, so uh, in the uh, uh, US, uh, I haven't bought anything yet, but uh, I think apps has got away on me. Uh, and uh, uh, if we have a look at uh, the two shares that I am most interested in, uh, based on my own patterns, is uh, NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, and if I chart those, uh, you can see that uh, we've got this uh, Gartley stroke spring pattern. Uh, and I, I would certainly, they're on hold recommendations at the moment. 
But if that uh, green light, in fact, uh, uh, stays to the end of the day, then I'll be interested in buying into those if it breaks above that level. That's what some people, uh, I used to be called a one, two, three bottom, but I see uh, it's now called, uh, some people call it a, a pocket pivot. Uh, so uh, there's nothing really new. They just get new names. So uh, I move up through that level. That would be a one, two, three reversal. And I think uh, uh, coming after this uh, uh, spring stroke uh, Garkley pattern, uh, that in fact would be a, a very good entry. Uh, and a very similar situation on, M on AMD. I really like this pattern. I'll, I'll, I mentioned on many occasions, this ran uh, on uh, high volume and it's pulled back on relatively low volume. As you can see, the earnings per share is going the right way. And um, uh, close stroke an excursion above that level uh, and the general market positive. Uh, certainly a break above last Thursday's close uh, on the general market plus a break above this level, which is in fact also last Thursday's close, that would be very positive indeed. And I think both those shares will do well. I, I, I need to wait for a little bit of a pullback in apps. Uh, so, uh, but apps is going great guns uh, at the minute. So uh, nothing done in the US, just trying to follow some simple rules. Uh, and uh, uh, certainly that would be uh, very welcome today, that, uh, that green light. In the UK, well, uh, in the UK, uh, the underlying, the primary wave turned up yesterday uh, and still no evidence of any green in the UK. Uh, and I haven't added to any positions, but I've been busy uh, formulating a watch list. Uh, and uh, uh, these are stocks that I don't own, that I'm looking at. Uh, and uh, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time this afternoon uh, justifying that, uh, justifying these, this selection uh, in a video that will go out to the VectorVest subscribers at the weekend. Uh, so I have some very aggressive plays uh, and uh, some more conservative plays. Uh, the stocks that I am holding uh, are these uh, and uh, still holding those uh, two gold shares gold up a little bit this afternoon. Uh, and uh, in particular, I'd be interested in adding to Cape and I'd be interested in adding to JD Sports if things go well. Uh, maybe Pershing Square if things go well as well. So uh, uh, for the first time in a long time, I have a considerable amount of cash and I've spent uh, most of the day today putting together a watch list of shares that I think will be up. Uh, uh, that I'll be uh, looking at uh, very carefully uh, for an entry uh, when the general market turns. In the UK, I think I'm going to, the DEW uh, market timing system has worked exceptionally well. And I think that I'm going to wait for that DEW market timing system to give me a buy signal before jumping in. Uh, so playing it very, very carefully. Uh, it's been uh, quite a good year uh, and I wanted to end that way. I'm still very positive of a uh, big run up into Christmas. Uh, once we get this pullback uh, behind us, um, if we go back to the uh, S&P 500, uh, I'm not quite sure uh, as to whether this is over or whether we need another rundown uh, to generate some liquidity below, the, below these lows. I mentioned to you a couple of weeks ago that my friends in the city tell me that there's still big, big bids on the S&P futures down around 4,250, down around these lows. Uh, and the market can certainly come back and uh, fill those orders. Okay, uh, And then a whole host of people will get stopped out underneath these lows. So uh, just be careful. I know that doing nothing is much, much more difficult than it would seem. I think that... Uh, if you're a long player uh, in the stock market, uh, as I am, uh, a close above last Thursday, uh, last Thursday's high uh, would give me a great deal of confidence before putting my money online. So I hope that uh, helped. I'm sorry about the ringer. I've been doing these videos now for years and uh, I should have enough nose uh, to switch the ringer and the phone off, but I didn't. Uh, I hope this helped. Thanks very much.